Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm sharing 10 cards that I made with the November of 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit called Snow Pals from Pink and Main. You will see fun fold cards, interactive cards, and other cards made with the beautiful holographic paper included in the kit, plus techniques using the stencil with glossy gel, glitter flock, and embossing powder. I hope you'll stick around to see what all I have to share. But before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I recently shared an unboxing video that shows all of the contents of this kit. So if you missed that video, I'll link it in the description box below. But here's a brief look at what all is included. The Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kits are one of the monthly subscription products. So if you want to receive a kit in the mail each month, you can join on the Pink and Main website. What's great about being a subscriber is that you can receive 15% off other products in the store. The kits are an amazing value and are packed full of card making supplies. When you subscribe to the kits, it will be shipped around the 15th of the month, but you can still sign up and purchase through the end of the month unless it sells out. Your subscription will change to the next month's box on the 1st. If you'd like to subscribe, I will have a link down in the description box below. This is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. This helps to support my channel. To start, I'm using the Snow Sparkle stencil that's included in the kit, along with a sheet of white 12 inch by 12 inch cardstock from my stash. Now, since this stencil is large, I figured I would use it a few times on this large piece of cardstock. So when I'm done, I can cut it down to make a bunch of cards. And I'm applying the Pink and Main Glossy Gel on top of this stencil using one of the Pink and Main palette knives. Now, if you're not familiar with Glossy Gel, you can add dimension and texture to your projects, and it dries clear with a glossy finish. You can also color the gel with reinker and add glitter and flock while it's still wet. Now, I've never tried using the glossy gel before with flock, so you can get to see me doing this for the first time. But this particular flock that I'm using is mixed with glitter, and it's called Sparkling in the Clouds. Now, the glossy gel and the flock are not included in this month's kit, but they pair perfectly with the snowflake stencil to create some really cool mixed media backgrounds. Now, if you're not familiar with flock, it contains flocking fibers to add a fluffy and fuzzy texture to your creations. And since this includes glitter and I'm applying it on my work surface here, I will be pulling in some parchment paper to try to keep this from getting all over the place, which I still did anyway, but you'll see that here in just a moment. Now, I'm sure there was a better way to do this, <laughs> to apply that gel in the flock. And it might have been easier to use small card panels instead of such a large piece. But what I'm trying to do is coat the entire sheet, coat those snowflakes with the flock and the glitter. But the parchment paper was definitely helpful to gather up what didn't stick to the cardstock. I finished covering the whole thing and set it aside to dry for a few hours. Now I'm moving on to the stamping. I'm using the Snowpal stamp set included in the kit along with my Misty stamping platform and a few half sheets of Expressit blending cardstock since it works great with Copic markers. Now I've placed all of the image stamps toward the top of the platform and the sentiment stamps at the bottom. And I've made sure to spread them out enough so that I can fit the coordinating dies on top around them so that I can cut them out when I'm done. And I'm using a few of the pink and main ink pads in the colors that match the cardstock that comes in the kit. That way I'll have a variety to choose from. Now if you've been with me a while, you know that I like to mass produce cards. So anytime I'm using a stamp set, I usually stamp all of the images out multiple times so, so that I'll have extras and I can grab those when I need to make a quick card. Now these inks are also not included in the kit, but when I bought them, I purchased the bundle, which includes this handle with the Velcro stickers, and it makes it super easy to apply the ink. And the ink pads are made of foam and they are super juicy, so it doesn't take much. I'm also using the pink and main embossing or watermark ink on the sentiments and a few of the images along the bottom. And next I'll be applying some blueberry fizz embossing powder on top and then using the heat tool to melt that powder. Heat embossing is one of my favorite techniques and I'm kind of sad I don't really use it much in my videos because it is a lot of fun. I love watching the powder melt. 
But Pink and Main has a wide variety of embossing powders available, including ones with glitter. But I chose this dark blue color to match the barbershop cardstock. I figured I could use these embossed images without having to color them in on some of my cards. Next, I added the coordinating dies to all of the images and I'm sticking them down with some low tack mint tape. And I'll be using this as a template to be able to quickly cut out all of the images and sentiments for the other colors that I stamped out. After running this through my die cut machine, I carefully removed the die cuts, trying to keep the dies stuck down in place so that all I have to do is line up that next half sheet of stamped images behind it. And then I can run that through my die cutting machine. Now doing it this way saves a ton of time. And I just repeat this process until all of my images are cut out. When I ran the sheet of blue images through my Spellbinders die cutting machine, a few of them fell out and fell onto the roller part of the machine. And I didn't notice it until I'd already run that second sheet through. So a few of these got bent a little bit. I don't know how I managed to do that, but I guess it's because my plates are a little bit warped and it made that popping sound and everything flew when I ran it through the machine. So I guess they slid in there without me noticing. But anyway, I used Copic markers to add some color. I won't show coloring all of these, don't worry. I just wanted to give you a quick glance at my process. And while I do this, I'll tell you a little bit more about the Crafty Courtyard kits. They are one of the monthly subscription products from Pink and & Main. And the kit base price is only $34.99. And an automatic shipping charge is added based on your location. But I think these kits are a wonderful value. I can usually get about 60 cards made out of a kit by pulling in a few extra sheets of cardstock for my card bases. And this month's kit has holographic papers. It usually includes pattern paper pads, which is kind of my thing, but this holographic paper is gorgeous and I thought I'd use it to make some fun fold cards to share with you. Now that this sheet of snowflakes with the flock on it is dry, I'm gonna cut it into panels that I can work with. So I cut the bottom strip off so I can use that for a slimline card. And the others, I'm just gonna cut down to smaller A2 size panels, the four by five and a quarter. Now that everything is prepped, I'll start by showing you my first fun fold card, a gate fold card. So I'm taking this teal piece of cardstock called Lakeside that measures five and a half by eight and a half, and I'm scoring it at two and three quarters and flipping it over and scoring it again at two and three quarters. I use the edge of my scoreboard to push the two gates together to make sure there's not a gap between them and I burnished along the edges really well. Then I took one of the four by five and a quarter inch panels and cut it in half at two inches so that I could put one on each side of the gate. And you'll see me using my precision glue press, one of my absolute favorite new crafty tools. It helps me to not use so much glue because it has a fine tip and I can pull the trigger instead of squeezing the bottle, which helps with my carpal tunnel. But for the focal point on this card, I added a square piece of that brushed holographic paper on top of the lakeside layer. And I glued down the snowman, uh, the music note and the sentiment that says just a note to cheer you on top and I, I'll add a white panel on the inside and add a personal message later. But I ended up add, adding some touch of gloss to the snowman's eyes and to the music note to finish this off. But this is a gatefold card. I love all of that shine and the fuzzy texture of those flocked snowflakes. Now I'll make a slimline card using that long panel. For this, I took a sheet of the Sunny Sky cardstock that came in the kit and I cut it down to seven inches by eight and a half inches. And then I trimmed the snowflake panel down a bit to three and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. And on the seven inch side of the cardstock, I scored it at three and a half inches to make the card base. And because I'm using a mini scoreboard, I had to flip it over to finish scoring the rest. So now you'll see that there is a white snowbank across the bottom. I cut this out by hand and I glued it on the bottom of that snowflake panel and then I added some Stickles glitter glue in the ice glaze color across the top of the snowbank and I allowed it to fully dry. But I guess I didn't record this part so you didn't see me doing any of that on camera. But um, I added some foam tape to the back of the snowman, the mailbox and the sentiment just to give it some more dimension. And that finishes off my second card. Now I'll show you how to make an easel card. This is super easy. First, you'll need a piece of four and a quarter by 11 inch cardstock. 
and then you'll score this at five and a half inches and then again at two and three quarter inches make sure you burnish it well and I have a layer of holographic cardstock that was cut to three and three quarter by five inches and also a gray layer that measures four by five and a quarter inches and then I glued these two together and then I added glue to the bottom part of the easel card only that way when I line up the panel it will only be stuck to the bottom of the card base and then the top part will stick up when it folds and in order for this to stay up like an easel I'm adding a couple layers of a snowbank that I cut out by hand I'm going to add this to the inside I'm just using my fingers to kind of measure where I need to cut it so again I'm just cutting this out by hand I'm going to have two layers on the inside and then I also cut another layer for the front of the card I thought about adding some foam tape but decided against it because I didn't want it to be too bulky so instead I decided to use some Colal 3d glue gel to make it stick up just a little bit more than what it would if I just used regular glue but I added some Stickles glitter glue to the top part of the snow to give it some shine and then glued all of the pieces down. What I love about easel cards is that they're super easy to make and the recipient can put them on display. The main thing you need to remember is to add something on the inside that the edge of the front of the card can hook onto to make it stand up. I thought about adding a silver enamel dot, but instead I just decided to add some glitter glue to the heart and this finishes off the first easel card. The next is a fun fold card that I'm calling center panel card with flap. I don't even know what you're supposed to call this thing, but that's what I'm giving it the name of. But first I cut a two and a half by 11 inch strip from the light purple cardstock and also a four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock panel. I scored the strip at five and a half inches and it will go in the center of the card. Next, I cut a one by six inch strip of purple and then I cut a four by five and a quarter inch panel out of holographic paper. I cut the flocked paper strip to be two and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. I laid all of the pieces on top of the A2 sized piece and I put the one inch strip behind the holographic paper and folded it over the edge to make the flap and I scored it at three inches. So for the focal point, I'm using the smaller of the scallop circles from the layered scallops circle dies to cut out a purple layer and a light blue layer. And then I'm also using the stitch circle from that same die set to cut out a holographic circle. And to put this two together, I added glue to only one side of the one inch strip to adhere to the front of the A2 panel and then I glued the holographic panel on top. Next, I glued down all of the circle layers, but I forgot that I needed to add the arm of the flap underneath one of those circles, but luckily I was able to tear off the top of the holographic circle to add it without tearing anything. You wanna hide the arm of the flap between some of your circle layers rather than just gluing the circle on top so that you won't see the, so you won't see the edge of it, I guess. <laughs> But anyway, I was able to salvage it and glue this together. And then I glued down my um, sentiment on the right side of that flap and put the snowman on top of that holographic circle. And lastly, I glued in a white strip of cardstock that measures two and a quarter by five and a quarter to the inside. So I'll have a place to write my message. And I just, I love this unique fun fold. I think it's really pretty. I love this holographic paper and the fuzzy snowflakes. It's one of my favorites. So my next card is what I'll call a half front card. And I'm using the card base that I cut off a portion of earlier for one of the snow banks. I measured what was left of the front and luckily the other piece that I cut off for the center panel card fit perfectly. But I wanted to add a blue layer behind it so I had just enough length on this piece of light blue cardstock that I used earlier to cut out the scallop circle. It's just an eighth of an inch bigger than the flocked snowflake strip. 
And since the inside of the card will be showing, I cut a four by five and a quarter inch panel out of holographic paper. And I used the stitched circle die and placed it in the center to cut out a piece where that white circle could be placed to write the message. But I guess with the holographic paper, the indents from the low tack tape showed on the holographic circle after I ran it through the die cutting machine. So I ended up cutting another panel and doing this again, but not adding tape this time. But I also cut out a white circle and some more scallop circles out of purple and teal. And I added the snowflake panel on the blue and placed a punch on top of it while it dried. And I almost forgot about it, but I added glue to the back of half of that circle and then realized that I didn't have my snowflake strip on there. So I uh, had to peel that off <laughs> and add, add my flock strip. Okay, so added more glue, stuck that on there, and I made sure to line that scallop circle up over that center circle so that I have a place to write the message, but it will be hidden. And then I hand cut another snow bank to add to the front holographic piece. And here I'm just playing with the placement. wasn't quite sure what I wanted to use, but I glued that holographic piece down. And then I put the sentiment up in the top right-hand corner. And then I decided to add some Stickles glitter glue to the entire snowbank. And so I let that dry for a while. And after completely drying, I glued down the snowman. And this finishes off this card. Super cute. And here I've got a circle to write my message. And it's hidden. And you still see all that pretty shine. Now let's make a shaker card. I'm using the half sheet of gray cardstock for my card base. I've used the two stitch circles in the layered scallops circle die set, and I've cut out a frame from some holographic paper. I'm going to create a snow globe, even though I don't have a snow globe die. I'm just going to use the circles here and make my own. But since I have this piece of holographic cardstock that measures four by five and a quarter, and it has that circle cut out of it, I figured I'd use it for the layer. And rather than covering up that pretty holographic paper, I cut out a small circle with a punch so that I can use it on another card. I have gray cardstock and foam with double-sided adhesive that both measure three and three quarter by five inches. I cut out a large circle from both of these layers. And to make sure I cut the circle in the right place on the gray panel, I traced the inside of the foam circle with a pencil so that I'd know where to lay down the die. Then I placed this gray piece in the snow day embossing folder to give it some texture. This embossing folder came in a previous Crafty Courtyard kit, but I think you can still purchase it separately. And then I also cut a three inch circle of acetate and I glued that to the back side of the holographic frame or ring. And after gluing the layers down, I added the gray stitched circle to the middle before placing the foam piece on top. I removed the adhesive backing from that raised foam panel and making sure to center that really well. And then I added some foam tape around the back side of that ring to make it stand up along the inside of the foam panel. And then I used a, a smaller holographic stitch circle to place in the middle. And I added another snowbank that I cut out by hand, added that on top. And this time I decided not to use the Stickles glitter glue, but I glued that down and then I added um, some anti-static powder tool along the inside just to remove any adhesive. And then I glued down the tree. And then I added some sequins from the mix that came in the kit, making sure to keep it in the middle so that I can still glue down the snow globe without it sticking to the sequins. Now to try to make this look like a snow globe, that's... That's what I got to figure out. I used a scrap strip of gray cardstock and I glued a piece of holographic strip onto the back of that. And then I hand cut it to make it look like the base of a snow globe. So I'm taking my scissors and I'm just slightly curving the edges. And then I ran a gray Copic marker along all of the edges just to make it stand out because it's the same color as the background. 
And then next I glued the sentiment on top. And then to finish this off, I added a few silver enamel dots in the center of some of those snowflakes on the gray panel. I know you can't really see that here on camera, but uh, I think that really added to the card. And here is my finished shaker card. Super cute. Now for easel card number two. And because I'm trying to use up scraps and pieces that I've already cut, I'm adding a few extra layers on this one and also using a full flocked snowflake panel. I had to add a blue layer behind the holographic layer because it has a hole cut out of it and the top part of the panel would show because it's an easel card. But uh, the instructions are basically the same as the first easel card that I showed. So you just add glue to that bottom portion and then leave the top without glue so that it will stand up. But on this one, I uh, added a snowbank along the bottom of the front and I plan to cut another one to go on the inside. And on this one, I'm also going to add a snowman on the inside. And I may go back and add a snowman on the inside of that other card. But since I'm... Um, um, since I've got this beautiful snowflake panel, I don't want to cover up too much of that flocking. So I kept the, uh, the snow on the bottom pretty uh, short, but I'm just going to add the snowbank on the front and then glue all of these pieces down. And to help keep them level, I'm adding some 3D glue gel to the tops of these images. And then I'm just using regular glue on the bottom. And I pop that sentiment up there with that glue gel. And then I'm going to add this uh, snowbank and the snowman. And that snowman is actually double layered. I cut out another plain piece of the same shape as that snowman so that he's a little bit thicker. So the easel card will have something to rest on. And then I finish this card off with some touch of gloss. And here is my second easel card. Super cute. For this next card, I'm calling it an embossed card since I'm using the embossed sentiment and tree for the focal point. It's not really a fun fold, but I am all about using up the scraps that I have in front of me. And I had that large stitched holographic circle that I cut out from the shaker card, the center of that, and I had to use it. And I also had the foam circle of the same size. So I just used one of the flocked four by five and a quarter inch panels on top of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch i'm sorry it's four and an eighth by five and three eighths blue panel and that just barely shows but i put that on top of a white top folding card base and i added the holographic circle onto the foam and then i hand cut another snowbank and add that to the bottom again i added some stickles glitter glue to the entire piece and i let it dry completely and then i added the blue embossed sentiment tree and snowflake on top a quick and easy gorgeous card now for this next card i'm not sure what to call it it's just kind of one that i created with what i had but it's kind of a spin off of that center panel card with the flap that i showed earlier except it's off center but this one will be landscape and again i'm trying to use up those pieces that i have so i have things cut out all over the place but i'm using a blue panel that measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches with a teal layer that measures four by five and a quarter on top and obviously it has a scallop circle cut out of it um, but i have that holographic layer that's three and three quarters by five inches with the circle cut out and this is the one that um i had that has that mark from the tape when i ran it through the die cutting machine but it'll be covered up with that three inch square card that um, I'll be placing off centered. But I cut a three inch square piece of vellum and I ran it through the snowflake embossing folder. And I have a one inch strip that measures eight inches and I folded and scored it in half at four inches. And I have a scrap strip of holographic paper that I cut to th three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters of an inch for the arm of the flap. And I used my circle punches to cut out several layers of circles and I used the holographic circle that I cut out earlier and I added glue just to the center of the vellum since I'm placing the image on top to hide the glue and then I placed this on the front of the 3x3 three three top folding card that goes on that panel. 
to make sure that I kept these snowmen hidden when the flaps closed, I placed it directly behind that circle and then folded it over and glued it down. But after doing this, I realized that the snowmen were just kind of floating in the middle of the square. <laughs> so I decided to add a white strip after the fact for a snowbank. And I'm also adding some glue in the corners to help hold that vellum down. I added a silver enamel dot up in the top right hand corner. And then, of course, I had to bring out the Stickles glitter glue again, and I covered the entire panel. <laughs> but this will add more shine to the card since the majority of the front of this is just the, the three inch white top folding mini card on top of a panel. But I added some touch of gloss to add some shine. And this is my off center panel flap card, I guess is what I call it. I'm not sure, but I think it's super cute. Something different. Now for my favorite out of them all, the twist and pop interactive card. I have listed all of the pieces you'll need to make this card here so you can pause or take a screenshot, but I have pre-cut all of these pieces and have them ready to go. I'll also include instructions on the screen as I make this card, but here's everything that I'm using for this card. I um, have a top folding four and a quarter by 11 inch card base and a four by five and a quarter inch layer, a three and three quarter by five inch panel, plus a three by four inch layer and a two and three quarter inch by three and three quarter inch panel for the front. I plan to use the tree and the sentiment here for the front of the card. And you'll want to score the card base at five and a half inches. So, so far it just looks like a regular card. But for the inside, you'll need two panels that measure three and three quarter by five inches and a large piece that measures 10 and three quarter inches by eight and a half inches for the pop up base on the inside, plus a pop up panel strip that measures 11 inches by two and three quarter inches. And then all of the squares for that pop up panel. So you'll need four that measure two and a half inches and four that measure two and a quarter inches and then one more two inch square for the sentiment or where you can sign the card. Plus you'll need some images to go on top of these squares. Now for the inside panels, you'll need to take a ruler and turn them over, measure down one and three quarter inches on the left and mark it with a pencil. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side. Then along the top short edge, you'll measure and mark at one and seven eighths of an inch. And then you'll do the exact same thing on the other piece. Now I'm lining these up to cut at the same time with my guillotine trimmer. But if I were to use my other trimmer, I know it wouldn't cut through both of these at the same time. So I would recommend doing these one at a time if you don't have a guillotine trimmer. But what you'll do is line up the two pencil marks along the edge of your trimmer and cut on each side. Now I'm taking these triangle pieces that I cut off to make sure that my pencil marks align with these triangles so I know that they're even. But what you should end up with when you cut off both sides is these two pieces will look like a house. Now for the pop-up base piece, you'll want to score at five and three eighths of an inch on the 10 and three quarter inch side, and then turn it and score at two and a quarter inches. And then at four and a quarter inches, and then at six and a quarter inches. And I had to break out my, my large scoring board and this the grooves aren't as deep as my other one. So I was struggling to use this thick paper on this, but make sure you score it at two and a quarter, four and a quarter, and six and a quarter. And here I'm just trying to smooth out where I came outside of that groove. But then you'll take your pop-up panel and you'll score at two and three quarters of an inch and at five and a half and at eight and a quarter. Then you'll wanna take this pop-up panel and fold it like an accordion with that middle crease up. So you'll basically be making a W. 
So you've got a mountain fold in the middle and two valleys. And when you set it on the side, it should look like a W. And then you're going to burnish along each of those edges. Now for this pop-up base piece, you'll want to fold it in half along the long edge and keep the fold on the left. Once it's folded in half, it should measure five and three eighths of an inch. And of course you want to burnish. Then you'll want to put the folded edge along the left and measure to one inch and make a mark. And you'll need to do this along the bottom as well. And since I'm using my scoring board, I just rotated it and marked it four and three eighths of an inch so that I have my marks one inch away from the folded edge. But I'm going to switch to my trimmer here now so that I can easily slide this card over to where I need it to be and make my marks. So keeping the folded edge on the left, I'm measuring at one and a quarter inch. And I'm putting a mark on that first score line at two and a quarter inches. And I'm also marking on the six and a quarter inch score line. Now you're going to take the ruler and measure from the one inch mark along the edge and connect it with the mark that's on that score line. So this is the one at the two and a quarter inch score line. And so I'm making a slanted line and making sure to stop at that score line. And then you'll do the same thing on the other edge. So now you should have two slanted lines going from the edges and slanting slightly down and inward. Now you'll turn your paper so that your score lines are vertical and you're going to take your scissors and you'll cut along those score lines up to the point where your slanted line starts and then you'll cut along that pencil line along that slanted line. So I'm on the right side first and then I'll do the same thing over on the left side. So now that this is cut, you turn it, it kind of looks like a t-shirt and the arms are sticking out. Or if you open it up, it kind of looks like a cross. But next you will fold up the lower left corner and line up that score line with the center crease. So here I'm just bending it, lining up that score line with the, the crease along the fold. And those two center creases should line up. And of course, you'll want to burnish this here. I'm just doing it with my finger first, but I'll take my bone folder and run it along the edge there. And then you're going to do the same thing from the lower right side. So you're going to take that right arm and line up the center crease with that score line. Fold it down with your fingers first and then burnish with your bone folder. I'm going to erase those pencil marks. I didn't know you could still see them. But when you open this up, you should have an X in the center. You'll bend the two arms into a mountain fold. And when you do this, it starts to close. And you'll close it and burnish along all of the edges, even the ones on the inside. So I'm just making sure that the bottom edges line up because you want it to line up when you close it. And just burnishing along the top and on the inside. Then you'll open it back up. And here you can see how this pop-up mechanism is going to move. And then next you'll glue those two inner panels down, the ones that look like houses. And you're going to glue it to the top and to the bottom of this pop-up base. Now I have to admit, I've seen this interactive card before and I was intimidated to give it a try because it looked hard, but this really isn't hard at all. I promise if you give it a try, you'll see that it's not as hard as it seems. Now this next step is to add a couple or add some double-sided adhesive tape along the edges of both sides. I have this easy tear tape and I'm making sure to add it along all of the edges. And you want to make sure that it's stuck down really good so I'm just burnishing it on top of that tape. Now I'm going to switch back to the assembly of the front of the card 
basically you're just going to glue all of the layers down i've got this sped up to as fast as it'll possibly go because i feel like this video has been sped up so much i know that it's really fast but there are features on youtube where you can change the settings and speed it up or slow things down i'll just probably sound like a chipmunk if you speed it up or i have a really low voice if you slow it down but now that I have the front decorated, let's attach this inside piece, this pop-up base to the inside of the card. So you're gonna remove the adhesive backing and then you will center it at the top of the card, making sure that that point is below the crease line. Then you'll do the same thing on the other side. But this time I added some liquid glue to help make it stick a little better. And then you'll assemble all four of the square pieces and attach them to the pop-up panel. And I'm alternating the patterns of my holographic squares here. And then after attaching the images and that white square, I plan to use the... Uh, warm winter wishes embossed sentiment that i made earlier i'm gonna put that on the center of that white square along with some hearts and snowflakes and now this is ready to attach to the pop-up base let me slow this down again so you can see what i'm doing so to do this, you'll add a strip of double-sided adhesive to the bottom left of the arm and also to the top right of the other arm. And then you will peel off the backing. And then you'll fold your pop-up panel flat. And then you'll turn it so that the openings are at the bottom. So you see you fold it together and then turn it so that the openings are at the bottom. So you'll just turn it 90 degrees and then you'll lay this square on the inside of the bottom of the card making sure that it's centered and then you'll fold the arms down and attach the bottom left arm adhesive to the left side of that square but basically you'll just close the card to attach it And then you'll just want to flip it over and attach the other arm to the back side of that pop-up panel. And then you'll just press it down flat to make sure that it's adhered well. And then test it out to make sure it works. And voila, there you have it. A fun interactive twist and pop-out card. I absolutely love this one and I definitely plan on making more of these for sure. I really hope you like my 10 cards one kit video that I made with the November of 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit from Pink and Main. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. I'd love to know which card is your favorite or share which technique that I shared in this video that you like the best. Let me know in the comments section. I know this video was a long one, but I really wanted to share how I made all 10 cards with this kit in one video rather than a bunch of different videos. But if you would prefer me to make uh, like real time videos, please let me know also in the comments. I hope you learned something new today, and I hope this inspires you to get creative. Don't forget, if you want to subscribe to the Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kit, you can click on the link below in the description box. You can sign up through the end of the month as long as there are still kits available. And with this one having all of the holographic paper and the touch of gloss and everything, it's probably not going to last that long. But I really love this kit. I hope you'll subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And if you are, thank you for sticking around. I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.